Just clap for those outside. Everybody outside should come in. No, no, not you. I'm saying that people outside should clap for. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited to be here? Yes. All right. Now, I realize that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift you've given to us, for the blessing you afford us. Guide us by your mighty, mighty power. Holy Spirit, we are thankful in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I realize that when you send people as missionaries, many of them, or not many, some of them cannot do well because, first of all, they are not spiritual people. That's one of the big things. They are not spiritual. You see, when a man fell in the garden, he fell from being God conscious to self conscious. He became aware of himself. But before he was aware of God, before falling, he was aware of God. After falling, he was aware of himself. Are you understanding? Yeah. Before falling, he was aware of God. The spirit of God and God's presence. After falling, he was aware of other things. So that's why anytime you see somebody who is very conscious of certain things, you know is affected by demons. If somebody is too conscious of what is a man, as men, as man, a man, men, we are men, is a demon has affected. Martha. Yeah. So, um, consciousness of God and of who God is is very important to distance you from sin. If you are too conscious of a woman, we women, women are this, women this. Is demon. Demons are working. Too conscious of your country. We Americans. So Americans, very conscious of America with a great nation. God is not building a great nation. He's building Christianity. He's building Christ. But too conscious of education. Oh, we, you know, you, these are idiots. And, you know, so we, it's, a demon is working. So consciousness, too conscious of everything other than consciousness of God, awareness of God, and even awareness of yourself and of your sins is actually, there's something wrong. And it's difficult sometimes to shake off. But the consciousness of God, when you are able to attain to it, in the midst of your difficulties. It's a high attainment. Yes. It's a great achievement. So, many people are, are not spiritual. That's all. They don't have the capacity to pray and to wait on God 
and to just be prayerful. So we are not here to have teachings on prayer. If you want teachings on prayer, I will recommend to you a camp that I did called Everything by Prayer and Nothing Without Prayer. That was a camp. If you want teachings on prayer. Now we are not here for that. Now, a person who is not spiritual can best be likened to sea sand. Yes. Sea sand. You know, sea sand is different from the sand we have around here, the soil. It goes all the way from black here to white. And white sand, there's a beach called white sands. It's like an unspiritual person. The person cannot preach. Even if the person preaches, it's more like a lecture. Because when you are spiritual, you don't have to talk much. And then you realize that it's having some kind of effect on the people that are listening to you. Are you there? Yeah. What was I telling you about? Yes. Sea sand. Only coconut trees can go there. Yes. Apart from coconut tree, nothing works. Yes. Yes. Only coconut trees. Sea sand. So, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. I met a sister, and she told me something. She said that she was an atheist. She didn't believe in God. Hallelujah. Now, we are here, we are here to pray. It's a prayer camp. We are not here for teachings. Amen. But above all, we are here not just to pray for an answer, but to develop spirituality. Uh -huh. This may be the point I'm trying to make that we need people to be spiritual. You need to become spiritual. How many have noticed that like there are some people, they look spiritual? <laughs> and how many realize that some people don't feel spiritual even? Yes, that's what I mean. Whatever it is, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Rarely will you find anybody doing something, do you see, for God without that particular characteristic, spiritual. A spiritual person of some sort. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 says concerning spiritual, not gifts. The word gift is in italics. It's, it's not added. It was added by the translators. So, it's concerning spirituality. And you see that he goes on and then he he makes a comment. Do you see? And he 
and talks about all spiritual things throughout the chapter. Beautiful. But then in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 37, he gives a lot of meaning to what I'm saying by saying that if any man think of himself that he is a prophet or spiritual, any of these two, let him acknowledge that the things that I am writing to you are commandments of the Lord. And this was about women. The verse 34 says, let your women keep silence in the church. It's not permitted for them to speak. They are commanded to be under obedience, which is the meaning of being in silence. Well, silence means silence. I don't know why. You know, I, I tell you something. The instructions of Paul, we may soon have to vote about which of them we are going to discard. Yes. Because I can see that the church has discarded a whole series of Paul's instructions, including these ones. And if we are going to discard these ones, if a man is a spiritual, a woman should keep silent. This is the only time that he used that. He said, look, if anybody is spiritual or a prophet, let him acknowledge that what I'm saying is from the Lord. That the women should be quiet and they should be under obedience. They should be obedient. To listen. So anytime you have a woman who doesn't listen, is not obedient, she's out of the spiritual order. But we will soon maybe have to have a consensus of the things of Paul that we are going to dis- discard. Women should cover their hair, we've thrown it out. Women should wear dress decently. We come to church in trousers. Now, instead of covering the hair, it's a new style of everything. (laughs) Women should keep silent. If you put on TV and almost every channel, a woman is preaching. Yes, women are everything. Women should be quiet. No, not quiet. Obedient to husband, not obedient. You have more of them. Bible, Paul, one of Paul's, we are going to have to add to a list that um, a bishop should be as one of one wife. It's also, we add it to the list of things to discard. Yes. Eh? No, because it's like Paul, Paul is not writing the word of God. So let's list all the things that, he, that, are, not, that are not from God. You see how you are a hypocrite? You swallow, you swallow a camel. And when it comes to a little ant, you say, no, I can't, it's too big for me. The ant is too big. But you just swallowed a camel a few, few minutes ago. This one is a camel. If anyone says he is a prophet or spiritual in any way, he should acknowledge that this one is from God. That the women should be under obedience and they should be quiet. You swallowed the whole, you said, we swallow that this one should be discarded. Then a small one, uh, Bishop should be the husband of one wife. Something that all the people that we are following None of them had one wife. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Solomon, David, the psalmist, and all our fathers. And 
anyway. You can think what you want. <laughs> but remember that Jesus, the people that he didn't like at all in this world were hypocrites. Yes. He didn't like them at all. Yes. Anyway, you are, you are making me divert from the topic. <laughs> yes. If any man think of himself to be a prophet or spiritual, these are two high qualities. A person who is spiritual and a person who is a prophet. I think you will not struggle with the idea that somebody is a prophet, but the concept that somebody is spiritual, you see, it's not something that is so common, but it is, it is a quality and a state, do you see, that you should be in. Yes. And that is why we are having this camp, not to learn new things, yes, but to become spiritual. And it's when you are not spiritual that you can't bear fruit. That you send some such a person and a mission for see that he cannot do. He's only doing internet jobs. He's only doing things. It's just a coconut tree is the only tree that can grow there. <laughs> yes. After years of working, there's nothing. Because there's something that is not there. Yeah. And that's what people don't realize. Like I was saying, I know the testimony of a, of a brother, of a sister, who went to church. Daniel gave a similar testimony the other time. He went to church and he, he was, uh, you, you, were, you had decided, he had decided that he would never go to a church even if it's a wedding or a funeral. He will never go to the church. Today he has about hundreds of members in his church. In the UK. Yes. But were you an atheist? I, I believe that there was a God. But I didn't go to church. You believe there was a God. The person I'm talking about was an atheist. Yeah, sit down. And when he went to church, what did they preach about? And when he went to church, he thought it was a church like in a cathedral and there was only one member and he was the only member in the church. So the church was starting, it was a starting church and he was the first person to listen to an invitation and to come to the church. He was the first. And that's the day that he, he who said he would not go for either a funeral or a wedding was there and he was the only person the person who invited you preached. No, he did projector. He did what? The person who invited me did projector. Projector. Yes. And somebody else did what? Um, the, the pastor was on the keyboard. Um, praise and worship was his wife and another um, brother. Yeah. And then I think there was somebody on drums. And then I was the congregation. <laughs> <laughs> you were the whole congregation. was the congregation. <laughs> do, you, do you know the topic that he preached about? I think it was Abrahamic success. Abrahamic success. That's a, even a nice topic. You can get polygamy out of that. <laughs> okay, sit down. But this person I'm talking about was more advanced than him, because he believed that there is a God. But this sister did not believe there's, there's nothing like a God. So somebody invited her to church. When she went, to her amazement, she was the only member. So the congregation was her. And then the pastor came to preach, this time not on Abrahamic success, I'm talking about spirituality. But he came to preach on tithing. Yes. And he preached on tithing for a number of weeks. Yes. A 
And this lady, who does not believe in God, has come to a church where they are preaching about money. <laughs> not a Ghanaian, an atheist, from a, a different culture apparently, and sat there, and the power of God touched the person. You don't know what is the topic. It's not the topic. It's the power of Jesus saving people. Yes. Yes. One brother told me he went to a church, not our church. He was telling me how he got saved. But he was in the church and Whilst the service was going, I think his wife made him go to church. Then he started crying. Yeah. <laughs> he started crying. And after crying, after church, he went to the, oh, he went to the pastor's office and started crying in the pastor's office. <laughs> Nobody has said anything to you. The Holy Spirit has arrested you. Yeah, that's how he got saved. And he's in church today. So, I'm talking about spiritual people. So, the reason why I invited you to come to this camp is not for me to come and stand and give teachings to listen to on whatever. We have a lot of teachings on prayer and even books. But it's the ability to be spiritual and the ability to seek God. You see, that's, that is what I think above all things makes a person spiritual. Why do I say so? Because the Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. So a person who takes time to draw nigh to God experiences God drawing nigh to him. The spirit drawing nigh to the person. And the person also has God around him because he's a God seeker. That's right, that's right. So if a person is not a God seeker, he is not likely to have much of God around him. Yeah. That's a reality. That's, that's what's missing. Yes. And people cannot seek God. And to seek God you need to know because God's power is real. God's power is real. And spiritual things are real. Whether you believe in them or not. So my prayer for you is that in this camp, so what in this camp meeting, which is a prayer seeking God camp, you will have the time to be you see, in as much as we are in a group, you are on your own. Oh, yes. It's not so much of fasting as in seeking God. It's not so much of fasting as it is in seeking God. Going away for God. You see, that's why for me, I would advise you not to learn how to eat a lot. Like those who like you, eat, you like eating and you like food and a lot. You, you, you will suffer with God. Your, your work, working for God will be difficult for you. Because each time you have to seek God means something drastic. Something violent. You know, it's happening to you. And it's not a good thing. And it, 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 so it means that seeking God is something extreme. And it's something unnatural. Yes. You, you need, because see, there is no prescription in the Bible about what a fast is. What it is. Unlike the sacrifices in the Bible which were detailed. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. To fast is being left. You just say fast. Mm. 
So fasting is like an open check. You can decide what fasting is. That's why every church decides, oh, we are doing 21 days. We are doing 40 days. We are doing seven days dry. We are doing five days. We are doing uh, 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 um, Daniel's fasting. It's a pleasant bread, etc. But ultimately, it is to seek God that, and to become spiritual. I mean, if I seek, if I draw nigh to God and he draws nigh to me, and I don't fast. I'll be very happy if God draws nigh to me. Even if I haven't fasted. How many would like God to draw nigh to you? Even if, even if you haven't fasted. Yeah. So all the rules that we make. You get what I'm saying? You can make them according to what your belief is. I know a man. I went to visit a church. And... They said, we will take you out for lunch. When we went, they showed where the lunch was. I went to dish myself. And when they came, they were staring at me. And they said, I said, is, is there a problem? I said, no. They said, we are surprised that you are eating. Because we invited somebody from Ghana to our church to minister. And he never ate till he left. He said he was fasting. He fasted throughout. Yes. <laughs> yes. He fasted throughout. So the main thing is to seek God. These same people told me a story of a pastor who was fasting for 70 days. And the fast was against a religion. Yes. Yeah, that was his topic. A spreading religion. He was fasting. I said, wow. And he died after the fast. As soon as he finished, he died. <laughs> yes. As soon as he finished fast, he said he, the pastor told me he said that he was this man was fasting and he was passing through the airport. You can fast when you're flying. He was passing through the airport. So he said, Look, I went to the airport myself with water and I gave him the, I said, drink it. And he said he, he obeyed him and he drank it. He continued the fasting 70 days. As soon as he finished, he died. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, I want to draw near to God. And I want God to draw near to me. And I want you to learn how to draw near to God. I am not interested in sending unspiritual people on a mission. Because many of you are going to be missionaries. I believe it's a, these are leaders or who are here? Who are those here? Pastors, leaders, Basanta, Basenta, Santa, everybody. I need you to be spiritual. Yes. Now, one day I, I met a, a white man because of the culture and the accent, the way of conducting himself and the accent and everything. You know, we don't usually associate white people with spiritual things. He was a pastor. So you, you got a feeling of a certain type of um, minister. 
But he came up on stage and he gave a testimony. When he gave the testimony, and he said he had a dream. In the dream, God said this and that and so on. And then God told him, go here, do this. And I said, because he has a huge ministry. Yes. Not an American, no. You wouldn't think that somebody like that would have them. But as soon as he started to talk, he said that he's a spiritual person. Uh, without being a spiritual person, you, you never do anything much. You need personally to be a spiritual person. Not just knowing scriptures. Scriptures are important. Because if you don't know scriptures, you don't have an anchor. And you're about to go into any direction, the waves blow you. And there are a lot of waves. A lot of waves. You can go in a thousand different directions. Yeah. But you need spirituality. And when I say spirituality, I don't mean fasting. But fasting is one of many things. And fasting, for those of us who are like, you can sit down and eat four balls of kinky. Is it, is it, is it a lot? Or oh, the balls are smaller now, isn't it? So four is not, four is okay. So how many is too much? Eight, six, six and eight. You match one. So like six balls of kinky, eight balls of kinky. You, you will struggle with spirituality, it's true. Yeah. Spirituality is going to be a struggle for you. Because your flesh is so tuned with a big petrol tank and it's always being filled. So when you have to even reduce it to half, it's like it's a big thing. Such people don't even know how to drink tea. It's true. Yes. It's true. Because if you had learned moderation, the Bible teaches us to do all things in moderation. If you had learned to do all things in moderation, being only on tea or even coffee or coffee with milk and sugar would have been even enough. I've been on many coffee fasts. I didn't even know I was fasting. I'm just drinking coffee. I just, I'm okay. I just drink coffee and coffee and biscuits and I can be there for days. But some of you, when you even look at them, it's like, what I mean, it's like a curse to you. <laughs> so anyone, and I'm not, I'm not teaching you to drink tea or coffee for cultural reasons. A person who is cultured, so tea is a social drink, especially in certain places. If you don't know how to have a cup of tea, it immediately shows you are from deep within the forest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean big tea full of milk and sugar. That is not how. No, 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 no. And when I say tea, I don't mean Milo. Some people think tea is Milo tea, tea tea, coffee tea. No, no, no. That's more of a milky sugar drink. Yes, you wouldn't know. Yes. But uh, apart from the social reasons, higher social reasons, spiritually, you can't drink tea and just be moving. Or coffee and just be moving. Yes. People take coffee to stay awake to learn. I take, I have taken coffee to stay awake to pray. Yeah. See that I'm on coffee. Yes, see that I'm on coffee. I don't drink much of it so much, but see that I'm, I'm moving on it. Yeah. 
It's not that I'm high, but I'm higher. around. Yeah. yeah. So spirituality. If anyone says that he's of these two great things, he should acknowledge. And it is true. The higher you go spiritually, you will re- realize that a woman is not a man when it comes to spiritual things. It's not. Yes. You, you will see the difference. All the things he said, you see, they are all true. But you will not know it at a certain level. At a certain level, a woman is like a partner. But at a certain level, can never be a partner. Yes, can never be. And if anyone is a prophet or spiritual, he will acknowledge it. But when you get there, you realize there's nothing like a partner. Nothing like a partner for ministry. But it's not, not normal, you will not know it. At a certain level, you, you will see that. It's, oh, wow. That's why I said that. Anybody who gets there will know. Yeah. <laughs> if you can get to the level of spirituality or uh, a prophet. If, God forbid, a pastor was not alive. Don't stand up. Don't stand up for this one. If a pastor was not alive, I would not appoint his wife as the pastor of the, ch- of the church. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't think that his wife is now the bishop of, of the church. I don't see them as partners. Even the, we, the, we, the bishops, council don't see it that way. Yeah. Some churches, it is like that. So you must understand. You know, so spirituality uh, is something to attain to. It's something to attain to. Yeah. But you become spirit conscious. God conscious. Father, we block this example of death in the name of Jesus. Refuse it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> yes. You have to be spiritual. Yeah. So I want especially the brothers to be spiritual. Look at Luke 18, 29. Is there, is there somebody on this thing, machine? Put it there for us. Okay. Yeah, it says, and he said to him, verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left a house, left parents, left brethren, left a wife, left children for the kingdom of God's sake. Eh? Verse 30. Who shall not receive manifold more or a reward? You actually get a reward, not a punishment. In this present time, and in the world to come, have everlasting life. Right. Wow. Now, you see, such a scripture, you see, it, you, you need to be at a certain level to uh, appreciate such a scripture. Because this one is giving you a reward for leaving your wife. Read it, read it and see. Read it and see. Read it. In English. 29, 29. There is no man on earth who has not left. Left is to leave. It's it's in English. I don't know if you know English. Leave, left, present continuous is what? Leaving. And what other? Has left. Has left. 
left will leave leaving left leave houses everybody will clap for that ah you are a good man you've left houses parents ah don't mind them they are they are, they are unspiritual they are demons brethren don't mind your brothers leave wife Leave your wife, family man. There's uh, the children. Unless you don't, please don't be angry with me. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. Take on Jesus personally. Just deal with him personally. You see, if you are not spiritual, such verses don't apply to you. And a stupid person who is just canal following. Things cannot apply such a scripture. There's a certain level that you get to that such a scripture can apply. Most people are at the level where you have to listen to a scripture which says, husband, love your wife, which is also from Paul, by the way. Remember, we were going to choose the ones that <laughs> we may not be following. Since you are into leaving Paul's <laughs> scriptures. You should see ladies on stage leading praise and worship in tight trousers. Yes. Tight trousers. And tight whatever, short things and exposing whatever. See them on stage. Leading whatever. We are full, we are receiving all. With new hairstyles and a lot of painting. When Peter said that, Charlie, this painting of the face and all this, he has won all those things. I said, no, 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 you are Peter. We are following Jesus. No, Jesus said, this is the Jesus. It's heavy. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so my prayer to you is that you become spiritual. Amen. Spiritual. Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 26, please. Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. See, one of the signs of lack of spirituality is talking too much and talking quickly. Oh, God has called me. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm this and that. Take your time. I'll never do this. I'm always this. I'll ne you never what? You are only standing by the grace of God. Don't talk too fast. Too much. So when you see people talking a lot, immediately you say, ah, are you Peter? Are you Peter? Hmm? By verse 36. Then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, sit here. Sit here. You see, spiritual training starts with the ability to sit here. Stay here. That's stay here. Sit down. You're not spiritual, you cannot stay. Stay here. For how long? We don't know for how long. Just stay here. While I go and do what I'm doing. Yes, be around. 
unspiritual people cannot sit in one place for a long time. You have to get up. You have to get your phone. You have to get your phone. You have to go out. You have to organize something. You have to see somebody. You have to be on Facebook. Oh yeah. Sit here. Just stay here. That's all. While I go and pray, something that I don't know how long is going to take. <laughs> you get it? Yes. Because I'm waiting on God could end this evening. Just, it's over. That's why we give ourselves up to Friday. Because humanly speaking, by the weekend, we may have to report back to wherever. You get it? Yeah. So in case God needs my 24 hours, I'm providing him with 48 hours. Uh, 72 times 4 is what? Four times 24, 96. <laughs> That's why we declare certain number of days because you can go and wait on God and he'll speak to you even before you get there. Once he sees that you are going to wait on him. Yes, he can decide that he's going to speak to you. Stay here. I told you to come. I've, I've just come. Stay here. Exactly what Jesus told you. Stay, stay here. You stay here and pray. I'm going to pray. Hmm. While I go and pray yonder. Yonder means over there. The next verse. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. You see, when you are spiritual, you will come to a place where your emotions are affected by spiritual things. You see, some people are only sad by events that have taken place. Oh, I hear the, what about, I mean, this has happened and so on. So. Oh, it's very sad. Oh, the funeral of so and so is taking place. Oh, oh, that's the widow of, oh, the whatever is doing. Oh, that's, that's, that's. Jesus was not, Jesus was not receiving thanks that somebody has died. That's why he was sorrowful. He was not receiving information about any tragedy that has happened in the world. Spiritual things made him sorrowful. Spiritual realities made him sorrowful and very heavy. Very heavy. He was heavy to talk to. Heavy to relate with. He was not himself. He was different. You become different. When you are spiritual, you see the reality. If you see the realities, you become heavy. Because the realities of the wickedness of man, of the deceptions and the evils were so abundant. And he was heavy. If you go, if you are sent to any country and you go and intercede, you be, if, if you are spiritual, you become heavy. It will happen to you. You will be sorrowful. And heavy. He began to be sorry. You see people, there's not the slightest inkling of spirituality on them. Sorry, sorry about what? <laughs> they are praying for their own physical issues. Not about spiritual things. Not about anything deeper. 
Nobody in Jesus' family was dead. No tragedy has happened. When will you be spiritual to the point where you are sorrowful and heavy? Are you from Rwanda? Yes. Heavy. When I went to Rwanda, I felt heavy. Yes. When I, the first night when I slept and I woke up, I got up, I felt I was walking on blood. I see the whole of the whole country spiritually. Not, so people go to Rwanda and say, oh, this place has developed. I never noticed all those things. I just noticed the heaviness and the sorrow. Spiritually. I've not seen any, anything bad. Uh, if at all, I saw good things. Yeah. Look, you can't do much for God if you, you just as a normal person. You need, and you see, so now you see that the person is speaking with some emotion about something you don't know. So how do you get that feeling that you have? You seem to be passionate about this. So how do you maintain your zeal? So how, these are radio questions for radio journalists and so on. Come on, man. Are you a journalist? Read your Bible. Sit down here. So I don't want to see you on your phone outside making calls and so on. You make all the calls. So I tell you, if you are busy, I am, I am, if you have a, if you have 10 things to do, I have 1,000. I'm more busy than you don't know how, you don't have any idea. You have one thing to do, I have a 1,000. All your things are, will not have to come, come up to seven things. <laughs> the things that concern you that are important. Huh? You, you do believe what I'm saying? Or you are arguing with me? you have one, I have a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. It began to be so far about what? About the realities. And you said, even though Jesus suffered on the cross, his suffering was brief for a few hours. So he was not being heavy and sorrowful because he was going to suffer. Jesus said, oh, they are good, they are, it, it will be painful. No. God granted him many things that alleviated the pain and made it very brief. His suffering was brief. They arrested him in the night after this prayer meeting, which must have ended around maybe 9, 10. He was taken to Kepha's house. In the morning, they dealt with him. And from there straight, he was taken to Pilate's house. And depending on the account, he was on the cross by 12, he had to be on the cross by 12 to 3. It was finished before sundown. In, in, in Israel, when you go, they give the day, the, the day, the days, and the Sabbath starts 5.30. Yeah, they would give you the time. The Sabbath starts at this time, 5.30 to six, sunrise to sunset, sunset to sunrise, sunset to sunset. The day before, 5.30. So sometimes you see that supper starts at 5.32. Yes. Then it means that nothing can happen. So they had to finish everything before. <laughs> they had to finish it very quick. It was a short suffering. Oh yeah. I'm not saying that it wasn't wild, but I'm saying that the sorrow was for more. More. There's, there's more at stake. All of our salvation. All of our lives, the lives of the human race, the wickedness of the devil and the devils who are also a fallen race. There's a lot at stake. And he was sorrowful and very heavy. Yes, very heavy. Are you heavy? <laughs> That's why sometimes you shouldn't fast. Because sometimes... Instead of being able to be caught up emotionally with God and feel God's presence, you are just waiting for six o'clock. That's all that you are doing. You see that it's an effort to stay till six o'clock. 
That's the only thing you are doing. So you are not able to relate with God. Yes. Oh, yes. And that's why sometimes when you wait on God, you shouldn't even speak much. Sometimes you have to be quiet. You see, Benny Hinn sometimes talks about be silent before God. Silent. Be silent before God. He, he often talks about just being silent in, the, in God's presence and to experience God in the silence, the beauty of that silence. Yes, be still. So that's why a prayer meeting is different from seeking God. Oh, yes. Per se. But a prayer meeting can be converted into something that you seek God. If I want to seek God, I won't lead you in a prayer. That's why I wasn't here last week. Oh, yes. I, wouldn't, I will not come and, see, come and lead a prayer meeting. When I lead a prayer meeting, I'm not seeking God. I'm leading a prayer meeting. I'm leading you to pray. I'm not seeking God. It's different. I'm now preaching to you. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't be, I don't usually become sorrowful and heavy. But I become sorrowful and heavy. Even when I'm going to pray, I become sorrowful and heavy before I go there. And then when I'm there, I become sorrowful and heavy many times. So the prayer camp is an effort to help you. You see, and the, the prayer meetings that we have is an effort to help you to pray for a long time. But you see, the praying for a long time is part one out of maybe three or four parts in getting near to God. You see, because just because if you stay for a long time, you should be able to pray for a long time too. But some people cannot pray for a long time. So praying for a long time is just part. But waiting on God and finding God yourself is that's that's a spiritual person. So you are the, the aim is to make you a spiritual person who can walk around. You may see the person walking alone to quiet. Maybe just that you may be crying. You may be feeling heavy, heavy, burdened, burdens. Like, what is wrong? So we don't feel what is wrong. We don't see anything. There's nothing. Everything is okay. Why are you all not okay? You can never be used to save souls until you, you, you are heavy and you, at a point there's some deep burden and sorrow for the things that are so sad. So sad. You know, when I see the violence in the world, you may not notice it. But when I see and hear the violence in Ghana, the murders that are taking place, in London, more people were murdered last year than in New York or wherever in America. More. More killings all over the world. Bombings in Kenya, terrorism, threats everywhere. You, 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 you just, oh, the police have to do better. We need more intelligence. We need, you are just a carnal man. You see, you cannot be a missionary. I hope you are getting what I'm saying. Yeah. But the more spiritual you become, the more you sense the heaviness. Yeah. If you were spiritual and you were in Ghana, as successive governments come, you'll be reading how to neutralize cases and becoming more sorrowful as you see the manifestations of cases being fulfilled practically and unbelievably before your very eyes. Yes, and you become more heavy and sorrowful. Because you see that it's hopelessly helpless. <coughs> the implementation and fulfillment of God's word that is hopelessly helpless, like it, the way it happens. Yeah. 
Verse 38. Then he said to them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful. Amazing. When you become emotional with God and emotional in God's presence, you are going higher. Oh, yes. I watched Benny Hinn the other day, one year, he was having a crusade. And then he fell down on the stage and started crying. And he wept like a baby. He cried. At first, I wasn't sure who was crying. I thought somebody had been paid for. So I, I, I rewound to see who was crying. He was weeping. Exceedingly sorrowful. Exceedingly. Exceedingly. Exceedingly sorrowful. You know, Rick Joyner said, the Lord said to him in the book, you cannot be my servant without knowing pain. Cannot. Cannot be my servant. Because, and it's true. There is pain in the world. And you are called to minister to the world. Who are all sad. They are not enjoying. So if you don't know pain, you will not understand that's why most people have a certain experience that enables them to minister. They go to prison and they become prison ministers. Or they have this problem and they start this ministry. So we need to do things without experiencing them. Yes. You don't have to be blind to, work, to help the blind. Tarry ye here. And sleep, no, watch. Everywhere you see the word watch is talking about staying awake. So the ability to stay awake. Yes. That's why I said that. I grew up learning how to use coffee. If I drink coffee to learn, I'll sleep. I, used, I drink coffee, I drink coffee, I sleep. I learned to use coffee to be more higher than I was. <laughs> oh yeah. Actually, I have actually developed, there's a certain taste in my mouth. When that taste is in my mouth, I feel spiritual. Although I may not be so spiritual at that moment, but it has been associated for so long with that type of praying and yes. That is, it's, it's, it's associated. You know, there's things that you can associate. There's some music when you hear, you feel sad. It's associated with this. There's some music when you hear, you feel happy. It's associated with this. And that taste became associated with praying and spirituality and revelation and guidance. I mean, when I think of it, I think of R104 Met Kolebu. When we started the church, I, I, feel, I, I feel that, that time. I can just eat any one biscuit and coffee. And I'm higher than I was. Everybody say, higher and higher. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Tarry. Just be around. Hang around. So you see people say, so what time do we start? What time do we close? That's why you shouldn't come here. That's why you shouldn't come here. What time do you start? What time, what time is the preaching? The time is your nose and your mouth. <laughs> We are tarrying, tarry here. And watch. And the people that were following him were not spiritual. So occasionally you go with some people and you say that not all of them could go. That's why he told, he told Peter, put the scripture there. Yeah, who is that person? He told Peter, then, come with me. Yes. Sons of Zebedee, Peter, James, and John. The two brothers, James and John. And then Peter. He said, let's go. Just, the, just you guys. The rest of you stay. You don't always have to start. Why are they not calling me? Why have they called me? 
It's not necessary. Ah, they, they, are not, they are not calling me for, the, for this meeting. <laughs> or you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. What's the next verse? Verse 38. My soul is exceeding sorrow even unto death. Verse 39. Then he went a little further. I'm showing you how to be spiritual. And fell on his face. I mean, a prayer that you are praying. You only know how to stand and walk. Look at Jesus. He fell on his face. So you can see that the whole being is drawn up into the prayer. The being of the person. He's drawn into the prayer. It's not something that we've been asked to be here till four. His being. He went a little further. And he fell on his face. How I mean, anybody falling on his face? He must have some, something that is happening to him. You see, all I'm saying is that if you, no matter how unemotional you are, look, if you want to ever know an unemotional person sounding and looking, it's Derek Prince. Derek Prince. And when you even hear the, him speaking, you can easily fall asleep. He himself would tell you. He, had, he used a certain word to describe himself. If I remember the word, I'll tell you. But when you listen to him for some time, <laughs> uh, you will see why he had a worldwide ministry. Worldwide. Worldwide. As he got older, sometimes when he gets to a point, he's preaching, he starts to cry. When he, when he talks about the cross and his sins and his life, oh, this is something. Yeah. You have made yourself an iron rod. <laughs> A sea sand. Sea sand. Spirituality cannot come, come out of you. Yes. So when you are spiritual, the Bible says you have an unction from the Lord and you know things. Now one day, I was choosing some guys to pray for me. I called them and I said, oh, come, come to my house and pray. I'll show you where to pray. When they came, I said, no, I don't want this guy to pray for me. Yes. And I, I changed it. Today is an orangu. Yes, full orangu. You know things. You start to know things. You start to see things. You start to recognize people. This person is this. This person is that. I said, I don't want this, this guy to pray for me. I just remember. And he was one of the most powerful praying people that you can ever find. He looks very powerful. I said, I don't like this person to pray for me. Sounding. So I like this non powerful person rather to pray for me. To pray for me. This one should pray for me, not this one. Now, he went a little further and prayed, saying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. You see, you can't be praying and not know what you are praying for. Some of you have been praying, don't know what you are praying about. <laughs> You're just speaking in tongues till four o'clock. Yeah. That's why I say that. Seeking God is not necessarily being in a prayer meeting. I would say that this prayer meeting is just showing you that ah, there's, it's possible to pray for two hours. It's possible to pray for three hours. It's possible to pray for a long time. But within the prayer meeting, there's the seeking of God. Yes. That's why when you see people on their phone, this busy, whatever, and so on, you see that this one doesn't know how to seek God. Doesn't know anything about it. 
If you have a thousand things, if you have how many things? If you have ten things, how many do I have? A thousand. thousand. <laughs> it's true. Those who find it difficult to serve, uh, wait on God are cholerics. Cholerics. Cholerics find it difficult to wait on God. But there's a trick for a choleric to wait on God. Why, why do cholerics find it difficult to wait on God? Because they, they always want to achieve something. They want to do, I have to get this done, I have to move, I have to get this done, I have to get this one. But there's a trick. And the trick is to get to the point where you believe and you see that waiting on God is an achievement. Then a choleric will be the most to wait on God than anybody else because he sees it as one of his achievements. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the way when you make the switch. You see, like the Bible says, Anna, she served God day and night with prayers and fasting. That is a way to serve God by just praying and fasting. It's a way of serving God. You don't do anything. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And all these many things. If you have ten, I have how many? Thousands. Thousand. <laughs> Are you still around? Yes. yes. She served God. Look at it. Anna. She departed not from the temple. She was just in the house of God. 84 years. Yes. And I'm raising up more prayer people. Yes. That's why there'll be an all night today. There's all day. And from here, I'm showing you the next. From here, we are going to the prayer gardens. Yeah. Yeah. From here, we are going to the prayer gardens. 100% answers. Your future is secured by the Spirit. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. One of the places most difficult to wait on God is a prayer meeting. Yes. You see, I don't consider a prayer meeting to be waiting on God. A prayer meeting is a training. Every year, I have that conflict. Should I lead the people in prayer or I should go and wait on God myself? Because it's about time. It's a time. If I do this, I can't do this. If I do this, I can't do this. But I know that I want to lead the people to teach the people how to pray. But that's not the same as waiting on God. It's not the same thing. I don't feel I've waited on God if I lead a prayer meeting. I don't feel I've waited on God at all. It's true. You see, it sounds funny, but it's true. Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Verse 30. Then he comes to the disciples and finds them asleep. So, waiting on God includes getting to the point where sleep must come. You see, it's not that the disciples were indisciplined fools. Just sleeping everywhere. They go every function. You go, you just fall asleep. No. It was time to sleep. It's been a long day. Because all of us here can fall down and fall asleep for me. We have been, we have been here praying. You are not fools. You are not here indisciplined. You are disciplined. You are here. I mean, it's time to sleep. Are you with me? He finded them asleep. And he spoke to Peter. You see, but some of us would have spoken to Jesus. When they wake up, Jesus, what time are we going? (laughs) And how long so that we can text our wives, you are not married. If we can text our wives so to tell them when we are coming. Jesus didn't have that problem. To tell somebody that he's coming. Why have you now come? For somebody to tell you that it's absurd for you to come at this time. Yes. 
Some people experience that. When they go and they come, they are told that it's absurd. Nonsense. How can you come at this time? Yes. It's amazing. You should have called. You should have, you should have said this. Yes. That's, how, that's what some people experience. Yeah. I pray you will not experience that. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. What? Jesus, Peter said, what? Jesus said, what? One hour, you can't pray one hour. Time is important. Mostly because you don't know when you finish praying. I mean, what about if you finish praying at 4, 20, four hours, 27 minutes? And you decided to pray for three hours. That means you, you stop praying one hour, 27 minutes before the answer landed. So you, you need longer times to set longer times so that the finishing can be within the hours that you've set. Or you don't understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you are hoping for a brother to propose to you and you hang around where he is. He may not <laughs> he may not notice you the first time, the second time, but he may notice you from the 17th time. Yes. So if you decided that I'm going to go for this meeting three times and then that's it. It may be the 17th time that he will notice you. And he'll say, sister. Yeah. It's the same thing with waiting on God. You never know when. You never know how. You never know what. Where God is going to answer. But that's where you even learn. When you can hear from God. There are times that God has spoken to me. Before I went to pray. So he was actually speaking. He, he saw that I was going. <laughs> so before I went, I was almost packing. Then he started to speak to me. And then it was like I didn't even need to go because the revelation that I needed to carry me on was already there. But I still went. I still went. Yeah. There are times that he, I waited on God. He, he didn't mind me. <laughs> For the whole time, I was waiting on him. Sometime to the last day, yeah. He began to be heavy, 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 and sorrowful. So time is of the essence when it comes to prayer. You can never say, oh, God hears uh, he knows there's no need to repeat. The one who said there's no need to repeat, the one who was praying for one hour there. <laughs> you have to understand God's word in context. Everything that is said, there, there's, the, there's the two sides. Jesus said, your father knows when you useless repetitions. Useless repetitions, but not repetitions. Useless repetitions. Some repetitions are not useless. They are, they are useful. And some, some repetitions are pressurizing. Hmm. Could you not watch with me for just one hour? Verse 41. 41. The Holy Spirit wants me to say this. That's why I'm saying all this. I didn't plan to say all these things. 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Not fast and pray. So you see, if fasting and praying, watching and praying is more powerful than fasting and praying. Yes. Because, why? Because that is a command. Watch and pray. Watch therefore and pray. So praying with alertness is more important than Praying with drowsiness and semi-comatose conditions. Yeah. But it feels more powerful when you are semi-comatose. Yes. 
during the week last week, at a point I, I, I could see that I was going to collapse. And I've collapsed before. But I could see, I could see that I was going to collapse. If I stand up now and I see that I'm, I'm about to collapse, and I knew that I was going to black out. Yes. It feels powerful. So, wow. I've, I've fasted to the point where actually I'm going unconscious. It's like I've, I've gone into the spirit. <laughs> but you, you benefit more by being alert and being able to pray. That's why I said we're breaking our fast at four, not six. Yes. Oh, you don't want the Bible. I, I'll just. Uh, you can read any book you want. Now, prayer affects spiritual things and even affects the flesh. That is why prayer, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. So pray. It affects the spirit and it affects even your flesh. Yes. Your flesh, which wants to do evil, is affected by prayer. There's power over these things because some of the things you are doing, they are spirits. It's true. The suggestion to do certain things, the temptation. It's not always when you feel something that is a temptation. When Jesus was hungry, it was a temptation from the devil. So, he didn't follow it. Anything the devil says, anything the devil says, whatever is wrong, anything the devil says, no matter how good it is, don't do it. So, it was a temptation but later on, when his disciples in Luke, I think, chapter 7 or one of these, were walking through the field and they took corn and they were rubbing it and eating, they challenged Jesus, why are your disciples eating? Then he told them that, do you remember when David was hungry? And he went to get food from the temple. Jesus, who, when the devil told him when he was hungry, said, no. He's giving an example of when David was hungry. And he was guiltless. Guiltless. Yes. So, it's not always that you have a feeling for something that is a sin. Yes. But when the devil component comes in, it's a sin. And that's why Jesus said, no. No. Hmm? He said, have you not read what David did when he was unhanged and they that were with him? And there's four. How he entered into the house of God and did eat sugar, which is not lawful for them to eat. Neither them which were with him, but only for the priests. Verse 5. Huh? And have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yes. <laughs> blameless. <laughs> yes. Anyway, back to where we were, please. Matthew 26. Watch and pray. The flesh is affected. Mm. Yeah. So unspiritual people, you know, they're never able to control the flesh. Women who are very emotional, they can't control emotion and steady and go by logic. It's not spiritual. Don't be deceived. Who cry? And say, no. When you grow, you will never receive cry. When someone says, stop it. Even in court, when you cry, say, please, uh, you can go out. You cannot uh, leave. Go out of the court. The judge will ask you. Experienced judge. 
Go out now. You're come to try to confuse us and deceive us. Go out. When you finish, you come back. Joshua, is it not in court? We'll be back in the afternoon. Huh? We'll be back in the afternoon. We just close this. Uh, Who does that? The judge will close the session. Have you seen it before? Yes, a number of times. Who the, was crying? A witness was weeping and was trying to plead with everybody. He said, please put yourself together. When you compose yourself, and then we'll be back in the afternoon after lunch. <laughs> so. Compose yourself. Don't come and manipulate the whole court, the whole court to have mercy on you and to, to pity you. Yes. So when you can't control your emotions, often you are down. You can't control your flesh. Fasting is a, it's impossible. That's why I said that from today, learn how to drink tea. Some of you have never drank. You only buy watch it. Buy tea bags. <laughs> Buy tea bags. Hmm. Buy tea bags. Hmm. Go and buy tea. I need two tea bags. Not Milo tea. And learn how to be spiritual. Are you listening? Beautiful. It affects your weak flesh. And it affects your willing spirit. It gives your willing spirit the ability to do what your willing spirit wants to do. Your willing spirit wants to serve God. When you pray, it helps your willing spirit to serve God more. And your flesh, which is weak and always pulling you down, it helps you to control this flesh. And it's not only a man who has a fornicating, desiring flesh. How many brothers have a fornicating, desiring flesh? Women also have other fleshes with other things. More things. All right, verse 42. And he went away again and prayed the second time. Repeating. Repeating. You are saying we shouldn't repeat. Stupid. Tell your neighbor, I'll slap you if you tell me not to repeat my, my prayers. <laughs> my Jesus even re repeated his prayer topics. <laughs> For two hours it did the same topic. You must have a sense within you that you haven't finished praying about this thing. I can never tell you when you know that you haven't finished. It's, 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 that's why I said that. If any one of you says that he is spiritual or a prophet, where are my brothers from Rwanda? I want to send you back to Rwanda as spiritual people. In Jesus' name. Yes. You go back to Rwanda as spiritual men. And you do more for your country than any politician can ever do. I tell you. Yes. All of you. Sit down. Only three of you are here. Now only three of you are standing. Stand up again. So that I count well. Ah, I see two more there. But I don't see one. one one's flesh didn't bring him here. <laughs> One is missing. Okay. Sit down. How many of you agree with me that when a spiritual man comes to a place, a good thing has happened to that place? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Best thing. Yeah. So, those of you who are lecturers in the Bible school, you need to send people who are spiritual. People who know how to wait on God. And just be teaching them lectures. If we want to learn philosophy, we go to Legon. All right? I hope it's clear. We need spirituality. We need people that can stay just praying. Hard prayers. Just like Jesus. I'm giving you the example of Jesus, not even Paul. 
You people have been throwing away Paul's commands. You know yourselves. You choose and you select and you throw away. You watch. More people are going to. I wouldn't be surprised if Jesus doesn't come in a hundred years' time. Many of Paul's things will be out. Yes, more. Because there are several things. So, no, this one. Paul was just, just out of context, you know. A woman should cover her. I mean, how? She should be silent. No, how? How should she be silent? How, Charlie? True or not true? true? Yeah. So from here, we are going straight to the, we are going to the gardens. Yes. But I'll, I'll let you refresh yourself so that you, are, you can watch. I don't, I don't need you to be in a coma. You, you'll be you be saying, you be saying that, oh, I, I fasted till I was unconscious. I was in the spirit. It sounds powerful. But the more you can watch, watch, be alert, and pray, the more spiritual you'll be. Amen. Verse 43. And he came and found them asleep again. Now, don't be sad when you fall. For me, when I fall asleep, when I'm praying, I don't feel sad because I fell asleep when I was praying and that was the night that I caught the anointing. Yes. So I don't feel sad. No, 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 no. If you are having a prayer meeting, your pastor is who is leading has fallen asleep. You don't have to. It's part of. It's part of. It's every extended prayer meeting includes sleep. Oh yes. I can pray for five days without lying down on a bed. Yes, I only sit in a chair. I consider it as part of my prayer that of necessity I have to fall asleep, but I will not lie down on the bed. No, I've, I've touched the bed. I only sit down. Yes. Where I pray and I sleep there, then I continue. Oh, yes. It's part of prayer to sleep. Over a long period. You don't have to be encouraged if you pray for a short time. You'll be encouraged if it's a long prayer. Sleep is part of all long prayers. Sleep is part of all long prayers. You can write it down. Sleep is part of all long prayers. It makes space for dreams. Sometimes God needs you to sleep so that he can give you a dream. That's different from short prayers where you're falling asleep. All long prayers include some sleep. Yes. All long prayers include some sleep. Yes. Yes. I mean, if we continue praying, if you've, if you've, you've dozed off during from the morning till now, it's normal. You may even have a revelation. And but when you wake up, you see that you've revived. Yes. Oh, sleep is part of all long prayers. Yes. Yeah. So that's why it's like it's a long prayer. So we are here. We are praying. We may go back, come, go, come. There's no agenda. We may close on Thursday. We may close on Friday. We may close on Saturday. We are, we are, we are just praying in the house of the Lord. <laughs> are you still around? 
he came and found them asleep again. That's different from those who just come to sleep. You see, I know those people. And you see, I'm talking to spiritual people. Though. This is a spiritual message for spiritual people. If you are not spiritual, all the things I'm saying don't apply to you. Oh, yes. The message about the women and all, it's, it's, if you are spiritual and you are, it's only at a certain level certain things apply. It's true. Jesus said, I have many things to tell, but I cannot. There are many things we can't say. Yeah, we can't say because it's all canal people. Paul said, I wanted to tell you, but I have to speak to you as uh, to canal. I have to talk, I have to change the message and make it a certain way and then say it. But I can't say things. I can't. If you can become spiritual in this season, for the rest of your life. Yes. So we are going to we are going to go to, we are going to the gardens. From here to gardens. Amen. We'll be there. Amen. Yes. Why not? Find a place. Be around. Listen to messages. If you don't have your message center with you, I pity you. Yes. You need your Bible. You need to hear from God. You need to be praying. Yes. Verse 44. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Repetition. For three times, three hours by our Savior. So those who can't pray three hours are not following Jesus to a certain level. Okay? Is it beautiful? Saying the same way. And we have tongues. Which is even helping us. But you see, you must know what you are praying about. You can't speak in tongues until you don't know what you are praying about. There's a way of speaking in tongues that you don't know what you are praying anymore. When's the one that was, what are you praying? So, shabba la 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 Are you a Buddhist? <laughs> Verse 45. Then he came to the disciples and said unto them, sleep or now. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's okay to sleep now. First, you shouldn't have slept. But your sleep is not going to change the will of God. Sleep or now, take your rest. The hour is hand. The son of man is betrayed to the hands of his sinners. In other words, his prayer is not being answered. He had just been praying that if it be possible. He knew that it's going this way. <laughs> it's going the other way from how he's been praying. A son of man has been betrayed. Yes. All evildoers should take note and learn from Judas. Because <laughs> Judas never, you see, when you read about Judas, at a point you feel sorry for him. Because you see that he didn't actually intend for Jesus to be killed. If you look at chapter 27, studying. Chapter 27 of Matthew. And then when the morning was come, the priest, they took counsel to put him to death. Verse 2, quickly, keep going, change it. When they bound, they led him to Pontius Pilate. Verse 3, keep on. When Judas, which had betrayed him, in the morning, he saw that the thing has turned this way. What? He repented in a way which most Christians don't repent. How? He reversed his actions. He brought the money back to them. The money that he went for them, he brought it back. He said, take your money. I don't want money. You don't know me. I'm a pastor. I don't want money. It's not about money. I didn't do this about money. 
Because you see, Regina says that Jesus maybe was hoping for Jesus to use his powers. So he was trying to provoke him. I don't know. But he really repented. The Bible says he repented himself. And then verse 4, went and killed he said, we have, bet- have betrayed innocent blood. You know, he was telling them, the man is innocent. The man is innocent. The- so Judas came and said, the man is innocent. The man is innocent. The man is innocent. He told them that. And he said, they told him, my friend, please, sort yourself out with God. Don't, 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 don't. What is that to us? We, we, don't, we don't know what you are talking about. Verse 5. He threw the money in front of them. And he cast the money. Because they were not taking He just threw it. Take your money. And departed and went and hung himself. When you read it, you can feel sorry. Now, this teaches you a great lesson. You may not intend to do something bad, but you are doing something very bad. So there are people who are doing bad things and are hurting people. But when you ask them, oh, no, man. And if you look at them, then you ask them their motives. They they don't look like they are trying to hurt anybody. People who are doing some negative things, they are doing the negative things and always defending themselves. Me? You don't know. Me? Look. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Meanwhile, they are destroying the person. Yes. So watch out. Those who are always claiming. Me? God knows my heart. Have you heard it before? Have you heard it before? God knows my heart. He knows what I'm... God will fight my fights. God will fight my battles. I leave it to God. Tell the But what you are doing is having this effect. What you are doing is destroying the ministry of Jesus. What you are doing is making them kill Jesus. What you are doing is ending the preaching, the nice preaching that we've been hearing. What you are doing is fighting God. What you are doing is killing the world. Me? Me? Is that what you are saying about me today? (laughs) Have you heard it before? Arguing, never agreeing, never because they say, Me, my intention, my heart, God knows that God Himself, God Himself, Yehovah, 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 You should know that even though you have a pure heart and a good heart and a good aim, I'm just trying to bring correction. I'm just trying to uh, warn. I'm just trying to prevent. I'm just trying to, even though you have, a, that's what you are doing. I don't know why, well, I don't know why he would, he didn't want to kill Jesus. I read your Bible, please. I don't know why you are angry with me today. I didn't write all these things in the Bible, please. You hear it by all means in this life. But remember that Jesus said for Judas, it would be better that he was not born. Which is very serious. I mean, like I don't, can't even imagine the judgment that is coming to Judas. I can't even imagine it. Because he never said that about all the bad people. But he said that about Judas. I don't know why I'm preaching to you. Because I'm supposed to, we are, we are having a prayer meeting. 
But you can listen to this message. It will be on the podcast to help you to wait on the Lord. Yeah. Yes, you. I was, I was just trying to help our relationship. Really? Really? Mm. Judas, if you are going to see him, you want to kill Jesus, me kill Jesus? Do you know when they appointed me as a financial treasurer? Yeah. Me kill Jesus? But that's what you did. What you have done and what you are doing, the effect of what you are doing is what you have to. You see, that's why God said, after Eve, he said to her, what is this? What have you done? Do you think if all of us are Eve's children, do you think she, 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 she I will inflict on you cancers, diseases, car accidents, tra- tragedies, sorrows, funerals. Recently, I was in England. I was in a cemetery. As I was driving through, I remembered Eve. I saw the cemetery full of people. I said, hi, hey, this woman. <laughs> she has brought something bad into this world. As far as your eye can see, you see the coffins. And the, 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 the graves, as far as the tombstones. Yes. That's why when God asks the question, what have you done? What are you doing? So you see, you have to find out what is the effect. What are you doing? You are ending the ministry of Jesus. Yes. I was just trying to advise my man of God. You are just trying to advise your man of God. That's God has given you. But you are ending his ministry. By talking the way you are talking and all this so called whatever. Yeah. And you pay heavily. Jesus said it will be better that you are not born. To be better. You will end somebody's ministry. You'll be shocked. God knows why God knows your heart. God knows your heart. Judas, God knows your heart. You pay. You pay. If I was the judge, I probably would say, yeah, Judas, it's true. You have a pure heart. The last time I saw you in church, you were singing, give me a pure heart. Oh, how do you sing that song? A pure heart. There's lots of songs about pure heart. God. God. Yeah, you sing that. Lord, make me pure in heart. Make my heart pure and true. Stop do that singing it. Continue. That <laughs> when they look at me, it's your righteousness they'll see. Lord, make me pure in heart. Beautiful. So Judas was standing with Lord, make me pure in heart. Yeah. So, oh, that's not what I'm trying to do. I know that's not what you're trying to do, but that's what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to have sex with your husband. Some, you are driving him to, you are driving him somewhere. You are, you are sending him away. You are sending him out. Go to town. Me? God knows my heart. <laughs> God knows my eyes. Tell me, I see. God knows your heart, eh? but that's what you are doing. That's what's happening. That's actually what is happening. You are sending him on a mission. You are sending him out there. Yes. should come. <laughs> Look at Judas. Oh. You 
you people, I don't know whether you are angry with the Bible today. It's very scary. So stop sitting there saying, God knows what I'm not, I'm trying to do. I'm, those of you who are accusers, accusing every day of this, accusing, they are spoiling your relationship. Fool. Look, I didn't mention your name. You're a fool, you're a fool. But that's what's happening. That's what's happening. If it's being destroyed, you are a destroyer. Me! Jesus. <laughs> checking the phone, checking this, checking this, accusing this. Why are you looking at this person? Why are you talking to that? You are spoiling, you are clawing down your... I shouldn't give your advice you are giving is destroying the world. Yes. You are doing the work of the devil, the accuser of the brethren. And you are ending things. Don't say you didn't end it, you ended it. Every pastor has met at least, depending on how long you've been, a thousand people who say, Me. Is that one day a brother told me? I gave him an example. Some of a Lucifer walking in the midst of the stones of fire. So I was explaining to him that you see, when you traveled and you were walking in the high places, he told me, Me, are you telling me that I'm Lucifer walking in the midst of the stones of fire? I said, I didn't say you were Lucifer walking in the midst of stones of fire. I'm giving an example that where you've been has affected you. Me. That's why it's not easy to be a judge. Yeah. If you were the judge sitting there for Judas, many of you would have pardoned. So it was a moment of whatever. But Jesus said to be better. Because the Bible says, Simeth is a small thing for the Lord to cause you to approach him. Don't think it's a small thing to be brought close. Those of you who are brought close, you don't know what you've been given. Brought close. Seemeth it but a small thing to you. That the God of Israel will bring you close. It's not a small thing. And then you, 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 you become Judas. Oh, but I was just trying to bring out the truth. We can't talk about truth anymore. Okay, I won't talk again. And you become moody. And you've made your face. And nobody can advise you. It's not a small thing for God to bring you near. So take it carefully. Judas ended Jesus' preaching, ended Jesus' travels, ended Jesus' healing, ended Jesus' casting out of the devil, ended his life, cut short if he was going to marry, prevented his marriage, prevented everything, cut off his whole world, and ended him brutally in the hands of wicked people. So I did me, Judas. You are calling me a bad person. I I didn't want to swear. I would, let me nail down. Let I would tell you something. You've not seen it before. You've not heard it before. God will fight for me. What you are saying, I can't believe it. You have some tissue. <laughs> Stupid fool. Learn from Judas. Oh. I'm afraid as I'm preaching, I'm watching. I said, Jesus, I didn't intend, I'm not intending to do this, but that's what I am doing. That's the effect of what you are doing. Now, Judas came to Jesus and he answered, is it, is it, is it I? 
He said, thou hast said. Verse 26. Ah, yes. So Jesus warned him. Is it I? He told him, you are the one I'm talking about. So he was warned. Like you are being warned as I'm preaching now. You people, the, the, the preaching you hear is more than counseling. Yes. It's, it's swimming into every area of your life. Because nobody can say certain things to you. If the person even attempts, you will be rebuffed. On a number of occasions, my pastors have been driven out of people's homes. Yes, they've been driven out. Go, go. When they go, they say, walk out. One lady, she, she told the, the pastors, why have you come to browbeat me? So they didn't understand the browbeat, so they went to check from the dictionary. <laughs> You, you can check the browbeat. Check browbeat. You can't come and browbeat me. <laughs> you can learn English by being a pastor. Intimidate. Typically to doing something with stern or abusive words. Huh? To use threats or angry speech. So she told the pastor, you can't come and browbeat me in my house. Walk out. They walked out humbly like humble dogs with their tail between their legs. They walked out. Browbeat. You can't even say anything to them, so you don't say anything anymore. May you never be at a place where nobody can say anything to you about anything anymore. Stand to your feet. Well, how long have I been giving the prayer topic for? Amen. I'm yet to give you the prayer topic. You know, I was actually coming to give you a prayer topic, but I'm not giving you the prayer topic. But I believe that this is more than a prayer topic because it's a topic to make us spiritual. Amen. So we are going to spend the next one hour or so praying for spirit. I want to be a spiritual person. Amen. How many want to be spiritual or a prophet? So I, one of the two, either spiritual or a prophet. So we are going to pray, God, make me spiritual or a prophet. Now, I told you, you can never pray well or wait on God without time. So we are going to pray till about... Six, getting to six. And then we'll break. We just, this is a short prayer, just an hour plus. That's short for those who are pr prayerful. One, one hour prayer is a short, one of the shortest prayers you can pray. Like you're not serious and just pray for one hour. <laughs> How many are, are learning that? I'm sending spiritual warriors into the world. Many of you are going to be missionaries. Many of you are going to the nations of the world. Many of you are going to be the answers to people's problems. Many of you are going to be mighty pillars. Yes. See a pillar like this? It's a mighty pillar. A lot of things are standing. There's a lot under. So before you see this one, there's, you cannot, I don't know if you can imagine how deep. If I go into the hole, it's far higher than my head. The hole of where this is coming from, under the ground. Far below where I'm standing. I would descend about two or three floors before you get to the foundation. 
So you need something. People just see the tip of the iceberg, but there's much more. So we are going to pray a short prayer for just about an hour. After that, we are going to take a break for about two hours. And then we'll start in the prayer, we'll start in the prayer gardens. And over the whole school, the only thing you don't have to step on a snake, that's all. Yeah, but you will not step on a snake in Jesus' name. And all over, we are praying, oh God, the same thing. Yes. So I don't know whether we, we, do we have to come here first before we go to the gardens? I think so. We'll gather here and then from here we'll go to the gardens to pray there. We'll be praying till when? Till your nose comes off. (laughs) Your nose. You see, I don't want to insult uh, 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 somebody. You get what I'm saying? to know for how long. I tell you, a time is going to come. You wait on God. You see that you just, sleep is just a break in your waiting. That's why sometimes when I'm waiting on God, I don't go, I don't go to the bed because I don't see the need of sleeping on the bed. I just sit in the same place. The place that I'm praying, I stay there and then I sleep. And when I when I finish, wake up a few hours, then I continue. You are just in one long prayer. There is sleep involved in all long prayers. Amen. Is it fantastic? <laughs> yes. God is blessing you powerfully. How many realize that if I send you after this camp, I'm sending a spiritual person? Yes. <laughs> How many realize that you are not so spiritual? Yes. Some of you are in the Bible school, but you are not spiritual. But you are becoming spiritual. That's the essence of the school, is to produce spiritual people. If, if you want intellectual knowledge, I will suggest so many universities to you where you can go and get a, a degree. We, we don't give secularly accredited degrees. We give spiritually accredited Hallelujah. diplomas and degrees. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If any man think of himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So these two ranks, I need you to have it. Either a prophet or a spiritual person. Yes. Lift your hands, holy hands. Father, we pray for spirituality, deep spirituality, to engulf us, to take over our lives, cause us to be filled with the Holy Spirit to the point where we are spiritual, cause us not to be just human and earthly minded, carnally minded, but spiritually minded, minded, spiritually minded. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sit down, please. Now, I want to just, before we continue in our prayer, and because it's going to be on a podcast, you can listen to it. So it helps you when you are praying. Listen. You see, the, there is a difference between a prophet and a spiritual person. But don't misunderstand. A spiritual person is a very great person. Now, a prophet will see a vision a dream or hear God in a certain way. Now, if you take, there are other people who are not prophets but are deeply spiritual. You see, and the person that comes to mind is John Wesley. You, see, you, you, will, not, you will not read of John Wesley's dreams or visions. No. Huh. But you can't walk far in Ghana without seeing his fruit on the earth. Yes. The spiritual man came to the world. Very spiritual. With a deep desire to be perfect before God. So when he was dying, no, there was a lady who had been appointed to look after him. So she was asked to move to the house, to stay in the house and look after him. About maybe a month or two, I think, before he died, she was asked to, she was asked to come and look after him. He had been alone. His wife was away but left him for 20 years before, and then he was alone after she died. When he, when he died, she was, he was informed later. And he was deeply spiritual. Deeply. Don't underestimate a spiritual man who doesn't see visions as you call them visions. This is like somebody was talking about
I was privileged because he invited me to come and eat with him. So I went to eat. I wasn't interested in the food. I was interested in what he was saying. I ordered anything to just keep the time going longer. Everything he said confirmed what he said, what Paul said. My realized was a deeply spiritual person from his experiences. But when he was younger, he didn't believe all that. He told me, I didn't believe all these things. So spirituality, but well, he's not a prophet, but he's a spiritual person. Yeah. So in this meeting, in this season, you are becoming either a prophet or a spiritual person. Amen. Tell your neighbor, either a prophet or a spiritual person. Is it beautiful? Is it fantastic? Is it a good aim? Yes. If I was a girl, I wouldn't want to marry somebody who is not either a prophet or spiritual. Yes. I wouldn't want to marry a brother who is not a prophet or spiritual. Because if you are not spiritual, you behave like a normal man. And a normal man is attracted to many people. He's attracted to you today. He's attracted to somebody else on Wednesday. Wednesday, you'll see somebody else. How many brothers have been attracted to somebody on Monday, somebody on Tuesday, somebody on Wednesday, somebody on Thursday, somebody on Friday, somebody on Saturday? If you are here, raise your hand. You get what? Confused. Yes, you get confused. Morning, evening. Sometimes you can be attracted to somebody in the morning, another person in the evening. But when I say these things, people think I'm being unethical or maybe I'm being uh, immoral or I don't know what, 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 I don't know what you are diagnosing me, your mouth like whatever. <laughs> but the brothers are owning up. Yeah. Is it true? It's true. Huh? Sometimes in the morning and then in the afternoon. Sometimes just a few hours difference. It's true. You see now, it's not an unbeing. Tell them, tell them, but it's not unethical. It is, it is, it is, it is it's real. Yeah. I feel the presence and the power of God. Yes. I feel God is here. And I feel that people who are nothing are being overshadowed by his power. Amen. And his power is turning you into something. Amen. Yes. That's what I feel. I feel it. So, Enjoy that presence and receive the presence which makes nobody a nobody into somebody. Yes. Jesus' name. Amen. So as his presence is here with you, Be blessed, be healed, be, be delivered, Amen. be rescued, Amen. be called, Amen. be anointed, Amen. be empowered, Amen. Yes, be changed, Amen. be healed, Amen. be set free. Amen. Goliath is lying down before you. Amen. Only the presence of God can do that. Lift your hands and just begin to pray. Lord, thank you for making me either a prophet or a spiritual person. Lord, 
Matase Katalabanda la Baba. Huraka Soteribia. Mondere beko shandere beko siya vada baka. Zuri ni miyako tari andele beko. Mandora ba. Ni barako shehevede giesta lambo baranieka. Maliva doko siya nda baka tori embenebo. Ni rabaka shote. Minavani aso. Raba entakunele. Ni tulabra kiyo davi enezdo. Malarido ko shandere beko sa. Fali adino moko sa mi hanta ranionte. Jimana Vaviado Bokosia, Maro di Acunte Remeniso, Ramana Chiada Baca, La Baria do Bokosi Andaba, Malife de Becosia, Yoroni Antene Mokoti Andelebeca, Lora Massa Paranina, Zora Casida da Barra di Ecosora Minesa Catapa, Lora Sateke Paranane, Zora Nemea Catasara, Lora Beshata Capilla, Vido Mokosi, Lorinia Saparo. Sora mia capa, 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 sora Pachola nama, ya pachola nama, ya pachola nama, sokora nama, lora basi kapa, zora machele mila, soko paraniya, zora niata ke, zora nama teke, sata pora nama, zora mi acha kapila, zora machina la, lombro seria ka, lombro seria ka. Lombro sediaka, lombro sediaka, lombro sediaka, lo chinama, sokora milo, so chakapa, sora ni anadolu, so chaparia, la jobra nilo, ma jobra nilo, lora minasa, lora minasa, lora minasa, soko paria, la cheni mola, la cheni mola, Zora bakapa, lanceni mola, lika toli mola, lanceni mola, rafadi aloka, lanceni mola, labona kosi, malobra di, siadi mene zelurani, mano kastoni, wancholo mila, mano kastoni, wancholo mila, mano kastoni, wancholo mila, mano kastoni, wancholo mila. Sokaparia. Manzuba, Soka Palia, Lembrandi, 
Sora Holy Ma 
Mantolo 
Mokchelele, Mokchelele, Zonchinele, Zonchinele, Ikoro Batwa, Manchinele, Makolo Mokchinele, Daniele Zile, Mokchinele, Ikoro Batwa, Mokchinele, Manchinele, Makolo Mokchinele, Ikoro Batwa, Ikoro Batwa, Ikoro Ambazigo, Antuni 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Father, thank you for the blessing you've given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Sit down. Father, we are grateful for this blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, what it is is that our prayer camp is taking the format of just continuous praying. So sleep is part of prayer. So for a few hours you sleep, then you just continue. So what time we are, so it means we are having all night. Every day we have day, all day, all night, all day, all night, like that. So it's just prayer and sleep. Prayer and sleep. All right? So now, what time do you want to come? Nine or ten? Nine or ten? Nine. Ten. Okay. All right. So, what it is is that we are not go- we are not going to pray till the till daybreak because we have to sleep and wake and come for the day prayer meeting. So, if we continue to six, then it means that. Pardon. 
Yes. When the one will be a crown. We are sleeping here. All right. Take your offering out. Have you given an offering since you came? Well, electricity is on. This is as a meter with a card. We have to buy it before we come. And we have to pay. So as we are on, it's burning fully. And the money is getting finished. And we have to go and buy more. Put it in slot. Pay. Then it's burning until it's finished. So no dinner is really free. You get what I'm saying? No dinner is free. My wife used to say that all the time. No dinner is free. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so since you prefer 10, we come at 10. So we'll go till, we'll, we'll go till about 3. And then we'll sleep. And then we'll be back in the morning for all day, all night, all day, all night, all night until we, we are tired of being here. Those in Accra, I don't know what they are doing there. <laughs> if anyone is either of these two, he knows a lot of things. So it's not about either a doctor or a lawyer. It's either a prophet or spiritual. Yes. Yes. It's not about a doctor or a lawyer. Or science or art student. It's either a prophet or spiritual. Whether I'm art student or science student, it's not, it's not what is important. It's not choleric or phlegmatic. It's a prophet or... It may be a phlegmatic prophet or a phlegmatic spiritual. It's just... The two key things are either a prophet or spiritual. And you know what I told you today? Oh, lift your offering. Let's pray over the offering. Father, thank you for the give, paying the electricity bill in Jesus' name. Amen. Did they give you a lot of free, easy to stay here? Isn't it? Huh? There's water for everybody. Wow. What about coffee? You didn't bring coffee for everybody. Oh. How many want to be higher? Not high, higher. <laughs> yeah. Higher than we are. I feel some excitement for you because I feel you are going to be mighty prophets and spiritual. Please sit down because we are taking the offering. Yes. Higher. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are just, you see, we are just going in and out. Prayer, sleep, prayer, sleep, prayer, sleep, prayer, sleep. You must be searching for... Everybody here must have the makane. Do you have the makane on you? The full makane, the current makane. The one that ends on uh, he, the reward for hard work is more work or some, I think that will be the last. If you, or candle in the dark. If your, if your makane does not include up to that and it's about how many? Hundred and something. You must have it. Now, as for inter, uh, because of what do you call it, internet, whatever, everybody can have. So you have to scan all of them and choose something that you, what is this one about? And play a mysterious one. You'll be shocked how God will bless you. Yeah. Yes. When I'm, when I'm waiting on God, I'm always trying to see if I'll find something. Hey. hey. Navigating through the archives. Yeah. To see if I can see something, find something that will, it will give me some, it is like fire inside my spirit. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Now, Lucifer has planned to wipe you out. But... 
through this meeting, it will never succeed. In Have you finished the offering? Come and pass. Satan is going to find you one of the most resilient candidates. Check the word resilient. 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 And when you come to church, it's, it's also an English school. Browbeat. You learned browbeat today. Now we are learning resilient. Check resilient. Able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions. Wow. You know, some of the conditions you face, they are spiritually organized. The flood that wiped out the whole human race was organized spiritually. Angels moved in, broke rocks and burst the fountains. And huge tsunamis came onto the earth and wiped out the entire world. This is a spiritual event. Cataclysmic spiritual event. Organized. Check cataclysmic. Check cataclysmic. You'll be surprised. The Satan is going to find you. Uh, no, he's going to find you able to withstand and to recover. Wow, that's resilient. Cataclysmic means what? A natural large scale event. Violent. Yeah. So that was how the end of the world was when the Noah's. And another one is coming. That's how the last days will be. Another one is coming. Cataclysmic event. But before then, he's going to be looking for the Noah's. Few people are called Noah. You know, so, how are you? I'm, I'm Noah. It's not common. It's one of the precious people who worked with God. Yes. So those of you who are planning to have a son, if you have a daughter, it can be Noah Lee or <laughs> Noah Lena. <laughs> Noana. Now, I want to also make a particular point. Hello. Our prayer meetings don't need to have any particular person leading the prayer meeting for the prayer meeting to be working. That's what you must realize. Because Jesus said, sit here. I'm coming. And when I was, remember there was a group like that, a prayer meeting. They just said, shall we pray? And then the leader, he didn't go to town. <laughs> yes, he goes to do so many things in town when he comes. And you pray. You see that when you come at four o'clock, you see everybody, they are lying on the floor, praying. All those people are pastors today. All those people are pastors. Because we were trained in prayers and waiting on God and long times of speaking in tongues and continuous sit here, stay here. Yes. So some of the missionaries have sent out, they should come back for training. Yes. 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 They should come back for training. That's what we are not spiritual. You can't be watching movies. You know, somebody said, but you, you've been mentioning movies. <laughs> now, you'll be surprised that to watch a movie, the same movie 
that is one hour, 30 minutes long, I can watch that movie for six weeks. Every day, I watch five minutes. <laughs> like that. The same film. It can be in the DVD player for four months. Yes. Because I don't have time for such things. Yes. That's the truth. At a particular time, if I get it, then you put it on. And when my wife comes and she starts talking, I have to go to silent because she, 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 she controls the chatting. So I'm all, I, I cannot hear the film unless it has subtitles. Yes. So immediately it becomes silent and then I rewind. So sometimes she said, but we have watched this part before. So yeah, but when you were watching, you were talking, so I couldn't hear. <laughs> So one, even sometimes I don't even understand the film when I watch as I have my watch as I don't know. I have to go back. <laughs> so you see people sitting there three hours. You are not serious. I don't want to lie to you. It's a personal thing between me and you. I'm just tell, don't tell anybody that, but I say you are not serious. <laughs> yes. Huh? You are watching a whole season. 22 episodes. One episode is how long? Yes. And these films in seasons, I've not watched them before. Since I was born, I've never watched these things, that these series that they, they have in. I, because I, when I grew up, there was, there was, it was not in existence. I've not watched it. season one, season two, season three, and all that. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's, 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 it's something that you cannot, you can, but you have a lot of time to do that. You are not spiritual usually. Yes. Yeah. Because the time that you should be sleeping so that you wake up and pray, you are watching season four. Yes. That's why you can never wake up. How will you wake up to pray? Let's us be serious. No. So if right now we take a break and you are going to watch season three, you are going to watch season two, you are going to watch, or even after this time, you are doing all these kind of things, you will never have the ability to be spiritual. Because it cannot be that we can finish with God in two weeks. How can you finish with God? That's one of the things I don't like about this season of prayer. Because it gives you the delusion that you finished with God for the year. Like God, we've sorted out God. God has been sorted out. Are you okay? You are all right? We are, we are going on to the year now. We are finished. Are you okay, God? Are you happy? We shouted for a long time. We have fulfilled our righteousness. Okay, we are going on with our lives now. I mean, there's nothing like that. That's, that's one of the things because it, it unfortunately has that effect. Yes. And the way the year is, it's difficult to get times like this. But you see, when the new year starts, people are afraid of the new year. So, like, will I die this year? Will something happen this year? So, let me pray and bind all these things to secure the year. <laughs> you see all churches full of people afraid like something. 31st to it like that. Or what I'm saying is not. <laughs> so, I, I, I want us to have that attitude. Just calm prayerfulness. And if fasting and praying now will make you not pray during the year, I would like us to start. From tomorrow morning, we'll eat kenke and fish fully so that Charlie, we know that we can pray throughout the year. We call the KNK sellers to come early in the morning. I'm sure they are waiting for us to come out. We are fasting. Is it amazing? Is it fantastic? All right. So sit here. Sit here. 
while I go and pray yonder. Sit here. I'm going to pray here. You stay here and watch and pray also. Yes. I must be able to, and I'm doing that. I'll say, pray here. I'm here also doing what I'm doing. You to pray here. It's not all that all prayers that the leader has to be with the people. Sit here once I go to this side with Peter, James, and John, or whatever. If we don't do that, we will never have the prayers that we ought to have. And it's only when Jesus was alone that he could be heavy and sorrowful, deeply commune with God. Yes. A prayer that was not even answered. Hey. Satan mom, he has brought a lot of troubles so. and you see he is planning to take you with him because he used to be in heaven he was like a super angel you know two days ago they had something they called the super moon that's the day that the moon is closest to the earth and it's very big so it's almost like daylight. I saw it a couple of days ago. You will see it like that. Not, it wasn't, it wasn't here, some parts of the earth. But I saw it. Where I was, I could see it. And it's like daylight. You think that the, the night is, uh, is day. Yeah. So, Lucifer was a super angel. Somebody who used to be in the presence of God. So much so that even since he's been cast out, he seems to be able to go and come. Yes. Yes. I mean, we have Orangus people who have been some way to the church. They come and go. Sometimes they come. So they even come around. They go, they come, they go. Yes. But he has been punished and will be punished for his rebellion and his sin. And he's constantly claiming that we too have also done some. You know, how many have been a child and they, when they take you, they say, this, this one too has done some. He did the same thing that I did. And that it's not fair if I'm the only one who is punished, it's not fair. Who has said that before? And that is what Satan is saying now. It's not fair. If I am to be banished, these people too should be banished. But he really, so Jesus has come to pay for us. That's how come we are here. Yes. That's the work of Jesus. Hmm? Is it amazing? It's amazing. Yeah. And we are going to be resilient. Hallelujah. What is the meaning? To be able to withstand forces or recover quickly from difficult conditions. Yes. Now, some of you, you come from a dark background. You see, such that you shouldn't be able to recover. And be normal. I tell you. How many have been into things that you shouldn't be normal? Ra raise only your right hand. You don't have to raise your left. Only, only your right. Look at right hands all over the place. You shouldn't be able to recover. But you are recovering in Jesus name. Now he's going to find you even more difficult to deal with. As a believer. Yes. And. I want you to take up three things that if you were the devil, you would want to make happen to you. Do you understand the prayer? I'm, I'm giving you a topic. Like if you were to advise the devil on how to take you, advising that number one, try this. Number two, this. Number three, this. Or if you can't think in that way, look at somebody who is like you and what bad thing has happened to the person. 
And you know that is what Satan wants to do to you. So those three, you see, when you don't know Satan's aim, you fight like a man who is beating the air. But when you know Satan's aim for you, say, this is what you want me to do. So this is the, this is the thing, I will not do this. It's the three temptations of Jesus. There are always three pillars of attacks targeted at someone who is rising into the ministry. Yes. What Satan wishes for you. Oh, yes. And you have to target them and decide this thing is the only, if I do other things, this particular one, I will not do it. God will help me. Yes. God will help me. What do you think? I pity people who, are, who don't pray directly against particular spirits. One day I was praying against some demons. I wrote them down, but I knew that if somebody ever sees that, they will know that. So I wrote, I wrote in a code. Many things I write, I write in a code. This one, this one, this one. I know them. I know them. I know. You see their eyes like wolves around you. Hunting for you. We will, we will do this to you. This will happen to you. This will well, say no. No. He will find you a resilient target. And the demons will pray for another assignment. Amen. Apart from you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you believe what I'm saying? Amen. How many find the devil is going to find you like a flexible iron rod? Ish. That's how they build buildings in Japan. They don't build it on a foundation. They build a foundation, tall screw, 40 floors on wheels. So that when the earthquake comes, the building just rolls like this. Oh, Mali, I will not fall down. I will never fall down. I will never fall. Because I know your aim that I should fall. I say I will never fall. So when the thing comes on the buildings, they rock. I, I, I couldn't believe it when I found out. They build it on it. Wheels like that. Moves like that. It just moves. Oh, Male. I'm not going to fall down. You will never fall in Jesus' name. The fall that Satan has planned for you. Some of you ladies, Satan has planned for you to become Jezebel. Yes. Today you are not Jezebel, but one day, yes, as you mature, he's planning for a Jezebelic intrusion. But it will not happen in Jesus' name. I hope you are still around. All this part of the sleep, we are sleeping now. We are sleeping and gathering kappa for. <laughs> when you go to Rwanda, people, they will be afraid of you, I tell you. Yes. You know, when I travel, I see darkness. I become heavy. Mm. I become heavy. Satan has guided certain nations in Africa that they shouldn't speak English. That they shouldn't speak even any international language. So, no books. No, nothing can read. You see people there like that. They are cut off. Pastors, everybody. It's wild. <laughs> There is no country, not even one country that I have not seen a heavy hand of devils. Including Ghana. You can see. Heavy hand of devils. Trying to spoil the whole place. But you are exempted. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. The prophecy you believe is the prophecy that you receive. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, sit down. So, 10 o'clock, we are going to gather here. Then from here, we are going to go to the 100% answered prayer guide. Now, why are we going there? 
we are going there because Jesus didn't pray only in one place. When you don't know what to do, do what Jesus did. Sometimes in the wilderness, sometimes a desert place, sometimes a garden, all kinds of locations. Because if you stay in one place sometimes, the physical things that you see will not even let you pray. Sometimes you have to try, let me go here and when I stand here for some time. If I'm praying somewhere and there's upstairs and down, sometimes I pray downstairs, then I go upstairs. Then I pray. Sometimes I go to this place and I pray there for some time. Then I come here, then I go here. Sometimes I stand, sometimes I sit, sometimes I walk. But I have to do something. Sometimes I go out. I have to just move out. Yes different mountains. Jesus took his disciples to the mountain. That's where they, he was transfigured. When we go to Israel, you see all this. Yes. Be there. I want to take you to Jerusalem, you know. I want to show you where the blood was sprinkled all over Jerusalem. Yes. The places where the blood was sprinkled. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. So, we are now officially on break. We are going to rest small. You can eat. You can drink. Because I need you to watch. I don't need to be in a coma. Hmm. But you see, if you need to go and eat four balls of kinky, I find there is something wrong with you. Some of you have never eaten spaghetti even. Yes. You see, spaghetti is not a... When I say spaghetti, I don't mean... Um, talia. Talia or whatever you put on the, on the wache. Like a small sprinkling. It's true. Some of you, rice is dessert. It's true. Rice is a dessert. To some of you, bread is a curse. <laughs> Sit down. In France, the main food is bread. The French Revolution happened because there was no bread. Lebanon, you see that flat bread. When you go out, Lebanese will take you for lunch or for dinner. They will give you that flat bread. That is, that is the yam. That is the pufu. That is the bamboo. That flat bread. Don't say ah. That is it. <laughs> so you see, you, you have not, you have tuned yourself because those who eat bamboo every day, fufu every day, eat it every day. It's like if they don't eat. There are some people when they travel, they travel with the condo. <laughs> No, no, it's, it, today is the end of that thing. In Jesus' name. You rather have to be calm so that, because when you eat a lot, then it even affects the next day. You start to feel more hungry. It's like what you had has not actually done the job. So your body now calls for more. What you gave me yesterday, I need some now. I need more. Now, do you see how I'm leading a prayer meeting? You will lead a prayer meeting one day. For hours. You lead young people Amen. to pray to God. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
Amen. Is it powerful? powerful. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing. Amazing. Hard followers. Hard followers. Beautiful. So I'm releasing you. I started releasing you some time ago. But it's all part of the release. The process of release is taking place now. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you glad you are becoming giants, and spiritual men, and prophets? If God doesn't open your eyes for visions and dreams, at least, you, not at, at least, you'll be a spiritual person. And that's a beautiful target. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for blessing us powerfully. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. You may be seated. You may not go. You may be seated. I will go first. Before you go, okay? <laughs> <laughs>